What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video and today we're back on the season recaps. Fourth on the list, fourth in dr on the draft board is the Oakland Raiders, fourth in the AFC West. And listen, this is a team that's been the same for years on end and probably has been, like, been this way for, I don't know, since I was a little kid. The Oakland Raiders have always been a bad team where veterans, older players go to like where their careers die. You look at Jordy Nelson, Doug Martin, Jared Cook, just a bunch of guys, and just their their when their careers are starting to go downhill. Look at Derek Johnson as well. When it starts to go downhill, that's when team guys join the Oakland Raiders. This is where careers come to die. Also, you look at Reggie Nelson as well. You had Justin Tuck there when he went to retire. He he was uh with the Oakland Raiders. Maurice Jones, Drew, just a bunch of guys over there. So starting off in the beginning in the beginning of this season, you had John Gruden who signed a huge contract, ten years, I believe, a hundred million dollars, insane for a coach that's been on ESPN for how long and won a Super Bowl with the Buccaneers that everybody thought everybody knew was Tony Dungy's team. And, you know, he wound up winning a Super Bowl there in Tampa Bay. But he was previously with the Oakland Raiders before he was traded to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We don't really see that anymore. Our coaches are being traded and things like that. But, uh, anyway, with that being said, the Oakland Raiders have a lot, a lot to work on. Their rookie class this year, we'll get into that towards the end, but their rookie, their rookie class was all developmental players, all all players with question marks and players that need to improve. There were no day one starters there, and a couple guys they had to start due to injuries. Uh, you look at like Colton Miller and Brandon Parker, the two rookie tackles that they drafted, they had to come in because Donald Penn couldn't stay healthy, and they didn't have any what anybody else at those two tackle spots, so they had to start both of them. Uh, you look at guys like uh, PJ PJ Hall, I believe it, PJ Hall, you drafted him in the second round. He's developmental. So Maurice Hurst, a lot of people thought he was a first round pick. He wanted slipping all the way to the fourth round like I knew he would. A uh, fifth round, I'm sorry, fifth round like I knew he would because I didn't think he was that good. I really didn't didn't like Maurice Hurst, uh, but I thought he was a good a good developmental prospect. And he wound up being the better of the rookies that you had this year. I believe he had like four sacks or something like that. So not not too bad for Maurice uh, Maurice Hurst and uh, other guys. But like I said, we'll get into the draft class in a second. But you know these uh, these are a lot of guys. You know older players. I'm sure this is one of the older teams in the NFL. I haven't looked on who is the oldest. I'm sure this is one of the oldest teams in the NFL. Like I said, this is where players come. They sign contracts for one to two years, and their careers start to die. Not because they're they're just terrible. It's just because you know this they're older players. They just want to play, and the Oakland Raiders have somehow let them in here for whatever reason, and that's why they never succeed. And you guys wonder why. Oakland Raiders are never good is because they have all these older veteran presence here. You need the younger guys. You need guys that are going to develop into great players. That's why this rookie this rookie draft class for the 2018 draft class could be a very good draft class or it could be a poor draft class. You just have to wait till they develop and see what happens. But I mean, they need they they need some kind of push. All right, we're gonna start off here. The Oakland Raiders, their their record, like I said, was four and twelve last in the in the AFC West. Their best game this year, you could argue, was the Pittsburgh game because Pittsburgh is kind of a playoff team. But we all knew, I mean, I knew that that Pittsburgh would lose that game because I just you just look at those type of games for Pittsburgh and they just they just lose those type of games. But you know, gotta give o Oakland some props there. Um, also. But I'm going to say their best game was against the Cleveland Browns. I know they gave up 42 points to Cleveland Browns, but they did stick in there. Uh, Derek, Derek Carr played well, and they won 45-42. to It's one of their highest scoring games so far this season. So, And then their worst game was losing to San Francisco, somebody that has a worse record than them, losing that game 34-3 to to Nick Mullins, uh, who had his first career start ever in the NFL and got completely demolished. All right, let's go on to the team stats. Offensively, this team is scoring 18.1 points per game, not even 20. That is not a good sign right off the bat. They're 23rd in total yards, 18th in passing yards, and 25th in rushing yards. You know, you have Marshawn Lynch there who, who's all right. Doug Martin filled in very nicely there, but you, you don't really have a number one back. Doug Martin's not going to be there for much longer. I believe he's a free agent. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, that Marshawn Lynch ain't coming back. Uh, you have Jalen Richard back there, but you're going to need a running back at some point. Anyway, moving on from that. Uh, defensively, they're giving up 29.2 points a game. That is last, dead last in the NFL. 29.2 points a game. Uh, they are 26 in passing. 
uh, 19th in, uh, no, 26th in total yards given up, uh, 19th in total passing yards given up, and 30th in total rush yards given up. 30th. That is not a good sign. That means they're losing time of possession. That means they have no control of the clock, no control of the game. That's why they've been losing games. And it doesn't help that they're 25th in the running game either. So they can't run the ball. On top of that, they're giving up a lot of a lot of yards uh, versus the run on defense. That is not a good key to success. And that is, that you can't win games like that. Ten times out of ten, you're going to be losing more games than you win. All right, let's go to your passing leader right now. You got Derek Carr with just about 4,000 yards, 4,049 yards, a completion percentage of 68.9. That is actually pretty good. 68%, uh, percent, let's say uh, 69 because it's 68.9. 69% completion percentage, 19 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Not good whatsoever from your star quarterback, who I think is very, very above average, but got a big contract. Sacked 51 times and had a quarterback rating of 93.9. You look at the running game for the Oakland Raiders. I think they would have with with what they put up here. There's a lot of good yards per uh, yards per run, a very good average from these running backs. So I think if you had a number one running back, you draft their number one running back. I think if you have another a number one running back, you guys can get some good yardage out of there. You guys can get a thousand yard runner and hopefully boost that um that those rushing yards per game up next season because I like the yards per average so far from your running backs. You got Doug Martin um with seven hundred and twenty three yards 4.2 yards per carry and four touchdowns. Marshawn Lynch, 90 carries, 376 yards, four, another 4.2 yards per carry and three touchdowns. And Jalen Richard with 259 yards, 4.7 yards per carry and, and one touchdown. So, you know, it's not too bad from the, from a team like this that's 25th in rushing with uh, the average like that. I like the average. They need to run the ball a little bit more. Um, so... I think eventually they can get that going if they get a better running back in there. Uh, you look at receiving your tight end, your 32-year-old tight end, who really came out out of nowhere. A lot of people know Jerry Cook is a, the, one of the better tight ends in the league, but he just went off on all cylinders. Had almost 1,000 yards this season, 68 receptions, 896 yards, and 6 touchdowns. So great job from your tight end that nobody expected would do that much damage in the passing game. You look at Jordy Nelson. Another guy that's just, his career is just starting to slow down. He's going to join the Oakland Raiders. 63 receptions, 739 yards, and three touchdowns. Jalen Richard also participated in the um, pass game as well with 607 yards. So one of the better pass catching backs in the league. Defensively, uh, to hear Whitehead, who came, who's coming over from the Detroit Lions, who led you guys in total tackles, 126 total tackles, 89 of them solo, and one forced fumble. And I had to highlight this because this is your second leading tackler, and it should almost never be your cornerback. That means you're giving up a lot of passes. That means things aren't going very well. Uh, when Rashawn Melvin has 56 tackles, 52 of them solo, 52 of them solo, that's a kind of mean that he's allowing catches and he has to uh, he has to stop these guys. So not good there. You guys need to shore up on your cornerback core, shore up on uh, your front seven as well. Get some pressure in there so your cornerbacks don't have to do all the work. Your leading sack guy is Maurice Hurst. This is a team that totaled 13 sacks all season. 13 sacks. That is ridiculous. All season, 13 sacks. The next highest total is 30 sacks. And I believe that's the Giants. I've, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that is the Giants. But, I mean, 13 sacks all season. That That's... I mean, that's mind-blowing. I mean, there's 16 games played, 13 sacks. You're not even aver averaging one sack a game. That's ridiculous. Leading you guys in interceptions. You guys had, had a decent amount of interceptions. You had Gary and Conley, who he was uh, getting better at cornerback for you guys out of Ohio State. A lot of people liked him. Uh, Gary and Conley getting better with three interceptions. Marcus, uh, Marcus Gilchrist, the safety, with three interceptions as well. All right, so now we're going to move on to the rookie draft class. Like I said, it can be very good and it can be very bad. Right now, we're leaning on very bad because none of them really had an outstanding rookie season, but it's developmental. All these guys are developmental players. I mean, all of them. Anyway, moving on, we've got Colton Miller, 
who is maybe the Eric Flowers of this draft. You know, a lot of people thought, you know, he shouldn't, he, he's a borderline first round pick uh, that I don't think people are going to really go for him too early. And lo and behold, somebody goes after him 15th overall. It's the Oakland Raiders who need offensive tackle help and stick him in at left tackle because Dol- uh, Donald Penn was suffering injury, injuries, a bunch of injuries. They, they moved Donald Penn to the right side. Then Donald Penn goes out with a groin injury, have to bring in Brandon Parker and Colton Miller played terribly. Colton Miller, one of the worst tackles in the league right now, and is looking like Eric Flowers. A lot of people are saying they're very confident about Colton Miller because he's very athletic, things like that. He's strong. Uh, he has all the all the skill sets, just can't put it together, just like Eric Flowers. So I, I imagine he's another Eric Flowers. You, you move on now to PJ Hall, the nose tackle. A lot of people are saying that you know he. A lot of people have a lot of confidence in PJ Hall that he's going to get better, but who knows w- with that second round pick? I mean, you got to be at least very, at least at least somewhat talented here, putting up some kind of numbers if you're first or second round pick. And then we move on to the third round pick, Brandon Parker. Uh, selected in the third round, 65th overall, moved him at right tackle off Donald Penn after Donald Penn went down with the groin injury, and he's another guy, and a lot of people are saying that he may be better than Colton Miller, we don't know yet, but he looks to be better at right tackle than Colton Miller is at left tackle, but there was a time, Brandon Parker, somewhere around in, in the, the November area, I've seen on one of the articles here, that he's given up three sacks in three consecutive plays. That is something I've never seen before. That's something nobody's ever seen before. So that's something he definitely needs to overcome um, moving on to his sophomore season. Moving on next, the most the most developmental player in the past draft, Arden Key from LSU. A lot of people were like, look, this guy can be a monster in the NFL. If he gets everything together, he's extremely raw. This guy can be an absolute monster. A lot of people were mocking him in the first round in mock drafts, late in mock draft season. A lot of people were still mocking him in the first round. That's how it has that's how talented he could be. But I don't know if they're ever going to reach that point with Arden Key. I don't know why the Oakland Raiders took that move there because I assume they knew they were trying to move Khalil Mack and they already didn't have a pass rush without Khalil Mack, uh, with Khalil Mack there. Uh, he was the only reason why there was a pass rush was because he was there. You trade him away and you bring in Arden Key. What did you think was going to happen? You know, obviously you knew you weren't going to have a huge sack total with Arden Key there who's a developmental player. You're not going to get too much out of him. So then you move on to Nick Nelson. I think... Th- I think this may be your best rookie or maybe uh, another rookie I'm about to mention, but this may be your best rookie so far just because, listen, he didn't play the first half of the season, but they they put him into the slot in uh, Leon Hall, another guy that his, his career went on to die. Leon Hall, formerly of the Cincinnati Bengals and New York Giants, you know, he, um, he, he was taking slot, he was taking the slot and then Nick Nelson comes in, the rookie, and uh, from injury, he gets healthy. In the, first, in the second half of the season, comes on and uh, plays in the nickel and actually does pretty well in coverage. Uh, so a lot of people are liking Nick Nelson there in the slot, and that may be their cornerback in the slot for years to come. So good job for the Oakland Raiders in finding some kind of plus in this draft class just in, the, in their rookie years. We now move on to def- defensive tackle Maurice Hurst. is another guy that was mocked in the first round a lot. Uh, some, some of them said in the top 10 uh, which is weird, or a top 15 uh, towards mock draft time. I didn't think he was even worth that. I was looking at his film, and I'm like, am I watching something? He, he's from Michigan. Am I watching something that nobody else is seeing? I mean, this guy cannot take a one-on-one block. He can't get too much pressure. Yes, there's some flashes there where he looks like a monster. He gets through that line pretty quickly. He's one of, their, he's one of those athletic but very big defensive tackles that a lot of people a lot of teams are really really leaning on to there the fast athletic defensive tackles like a Sheldon Rankins almost people are starting to like them a lot more but he just didn't look strong he was getting bullied at the offensive line and in the interior it just wasn't looking good for Maurice Hurst and I was like listen this guy's a fourth round prospect and he winds up getting picked in the fifth uh in the fifth round and you know I I wound up being right there he wasn't very good but he led you guys in sacks so you have to give that to him he may be your best rookie there I don't know you now move on to Johnny Townsend uh you guys drafted I don't know hold on guys Correct me if I'm wrong, but John Gruden, he's always been the GM in any team he goes to, really. He's drafted punter Shane Leckler. He's he's drafted him, punter Shane Leckler. He's drafted Sebastian Janikowski in the first round in Oakland. 
the first round in Oakland, and now he drafts Johnny Townsend, and I, I don't believe that's the only kickers that he's ever drafted. I think he's drafted another one before. What the hell is up with John Gruden and drafting these guys? I don't understand. You have so much needs on this team, and you go out and draft a kick uh, and draft a punter. Just pick one up. Brad Wing is still looking for a job. Brad Wing, who's one of the better punters, had a, didn't have a great season in his last season with the Giants, but had a very good season with the Steelers and a very good first season with the Giants, where he like almost led the NFL in punts inside the ten. And he has one bad season. We cut him, but he he hasn't been able to find a job since. And you draft Johnny Town uh, Johnny Townsend. To me, I, I don't get I don't get John Gruden. I don't get why he thinks he's so smart. He drafts I believe he drafted Shane Leckler, um, who 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 is now on the Texans, if I'm not mistaken, or he's or he he's gone or something like that. I don't know. He drafted Shane Leckler, he drafted uh Sebastian Janikowski, and he drafts and he drafts this guy, freaking uh Johnny Townsend. It's it's ridiculous. Anyway, uh Johnny Townsend is a punter, by the way. Uh we now move on to Izim Victor who is an inside linebacker. He is not with the Oakland Raiders anymore. I assume he's got cut. He did not make the cut. It's usually what you see from these six-round picks. They either make the practice squad or they get cut. It's usually what happens. But they found a late-round gem. Their last pick seven in the seventh round, 228th overall. That is Marcel Aitman. So, um, you know, he doesn't do much. He, he, he gets 20 yards, 45 yards here and there. But listen... He's doing a lot more than any real any seventh round pick really does. Whether that's offense or defense, he's putting in more work than any other seventh round pick usually does. They usually get cut or put onto the practice squad. So good job for him making the roster. Good job for him actually doing something in each and every game. He's doing something in each and every game. Not many yards, but he's actually doing something. So you know that's another wide receiver you guys can keep hold of, and he's going to be a cheap option for you there because you drafted him almost dead last, 228th overall. So. Um, you know, you can develop him for a cheap price and maybe he could be a decent wide receiver for you guys. A good number three, good number four option for you guys. So, uh, I, I don't like, I don't mind that pick whatsoever. Listen, if I, if I'm going to grade this draft class, I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it a C minus. Just because I'm still holding on to the fact that all of these guys can still develop into good players. I want Arden Key to get a good 7 to 8 sacks a year just to start. Maurice Hurst, I want him to keep getting those 5 sacks a year and be able to stop the run. That's going to be big for them. Nick Nelson continue to be a very good slot corner for them. Uh, I want Colton Miller and Brandon Parker to really, to really turn into really good solid players. Uh, tackles there at the left and right tackle spots. P.J. Hall develop into a good nose guard and stop the run. Uh, Johnny Townsend, who cares? Uh, and Marcel Aitman to be a good three, to, uh, number three to number four. That they could they could turn into a B minus draft class. But I'm gonna leave that C minus just because I, I want to see if they if they develop anymore. So let's move on to your free agents. And by the way, I do I do know that this 2019 is gonna be a very good draft class for the Oakland Raiders. They have three first round picks they have Mike Mayock calling the shot well John Gruden is going to be drafting and I think that's just a bad move there John Gruden he's probably going to draft another freaking kicker but uh anyway uh Mike Mayock should be taking the reins uh, as far as he should be calling the shots as far as the draft goes because he's a draft mastermind but I think they're going to be working together on this but I think at the end of the day John Gruden is going to be calling all the shots which makes no sense because I don't think John Gruden is very smart I think he's a uh, uh He's one of those people that give you big words to act like they're intelligent, but they're really not that intelligent. That's what John Gruden reminds me of. He's one of those guys that in a debate, he'll start using like like freaking huge words. Um, you know, like if you see political debates, you guys you guys know who's losing a political debate when they start using big words and they try to confuse you. That's what John Gruden reminds me of. So um, to me, I don't think he should be calling the shots, but it is what it is. I think the, the draft is going to be much better for the Oakland Raiders. Uh, since my May Mike Mayock there is now at GM. So now we move on to the free agents here. We got cornerback Rashawn Melvin. Make sure you guys resign him. Yes, he gave up a lot of passes. Yes, he's your leading tackler. So make sure you guys keep him. Get some cornerback, um, you know, um, competition in there because you guys need it. Jared Cook. It's up to you if you want to resign him. It's not like you're going to try to win a Super Bowl next year. So and, and he's getting older. So if you want to resign him, I don't care. Um, but I, I think it would be a good idea to do that just to get the passing game going. But he's not going to be there for much longer. Is what I'm trying to get at. 
Marshawn Lynch, just just get rid of him, Marshawn Lynch. Uh, Marcus Gilchrist, you could resign him. Reggie Nelson, he's getting older. I think he's like 32, 33 years old, 34, something like that. If he still has some left in the tank, I guess you can, but you're not leaving any room for any rookies or young players to develop. So I, I, I wouldn't do it, but if you wanted to, Defensive tackle with Jonathan Hankins. I love Jonathan Hankins, guys. He's one of my... Listen, I did not want to let him go with the Giants. I did not want to let him go, but he had a bad year with the with the Indianapolis Colts because they ran a 3-4 at the time. He doesn't run a 3-4. He is a 4-3 defensive tackle, traditional three defensive tackle. So uh, I would have wanted Jonathan Hankins to stay, but um, make sure you keep Jonathan Hankins on that 4-3 defense. He's going to be a very good asset for you guys, and I've even seen articles saying that he's done very well since he's been signed on to the Oakland Raiders. Uh, look at wide receiver Brandon LaFell. He's old. I don't know if you want to keep him there for, for uh, competition, but like I said, he's old. Doug Martin, he's actually done some very good things for you. I say you resign him for a one-year uh, deal, but don't, make sure he's not your starter. Draft a running back you could bring on to start. Kicker Mike Nugent, go ahead and re-sign him just so John Green doesn't freaking uh, draft a kicker. Make sure you re-sign him, please. Uh, defensive tackle Frosty Rucker, he's really old. Just get rid of him. Wide receiver Dwayne, ha- Dwayne Harris. I love Dwayne Harris. He got that 99 yard. He's very smart as far as special teams. Even with the New York Giants, he was like tackling players. I'm like, whoa, hold up. Is that legal on special teams? He was like tackling players and stuff like that. When he went to go receive a punt, he would like knock the hell out of a player just to do it because it was legal. And um, you know, he's very smart as, as far as special teams go. I could imagine him being a special teams um, coach in the NFL after he retires. He's very smart when it comes to special teams. I say you re-sign him just because he has st- something left in his tank. He has done st- some very good things for you guys this season. So I say you keep him around for a little bit longer. Uh, you look at uh, the cornerback Benny ben- ben Wickery. Benny ben Wickery. I say you re-sign him. I think he's getting older as well. A lot of these guys are getting older, as you can tell, for the Oakland Raiders. They really don't have any young, good free agents anymore. Uh, so you look at Benny ben Wickery. I say you re-sign him. Uh, off of the tackle, TJ Clemmings. This is a guy that's been bouncing around in the league. He's played with the Panthers. He's played with the Vikings. Now he's with the uh, the Oakland Raiders. He's one of those guys that were supposed to be developmental prospects going into the draft. I, I forgot what what where he was coming from. Uh, but he was looked at to be a first-round pick in the, in the draft he was at. I think he was in the same class as Eric Flowers. Uh, but he he was one of the guys that was like a developmental pick that really didn't work out and really wasn't good. Uh, so he's gonna be a uh, you know a journeyman swing tackle in the league. So I I don't think you should keep him around. But if you want to add some freaking competition there with Colton Miller, Brandon Parker, try to try to make it look like their job is gonna be taken away to try to put a fire under them. I say you do it. Uh, so go ahead and resign him if you want to. Uh, defensive tackle Coney Ely. This is a guy that's played pretty well with the Panthers and really hasn't found a spot to call home and anywhere. He's played with the uh, the Patriots. He's played with the Jets. Uh, he was with the Panthers, obviously. I believe uh, he's played with another team. Correct me if I'm wrong. He's played with another team. It's rolling off my tongue. I think so. I don't know, but he's with the Oakland Raiders now. I say you resign him there. You guys need all the help you can get at the defensive tackle spot with the Oakland Raiders. You look at Shalik Calhoun. He's another guy, developmental guy from the Michigan, uh, from Michigan State, and he hasn't done very much anything for you guys. So go ahead, just let him go. Uh, Marcel Aitman, the seventh round pick, resigned him uh, onto your onto your team, and Jalen Rashard, of course. Make sure you keep around him. He's he's the one of the better offensive players that you guys have. So. Uh, with 87, I you no, know, you have 71 million dollars in cap, so you guys don't have a lot. You guys have a lot of cap space. Don't get me wrong, but you guys don't have a lot compared to these um top 10 um draft picks. Uh, like no, the top five, the top five draft order uh, teams like the San Francisco 49ers, uh, and all these other teams. You guys have don't have uh as much as them, but uh, you look at the Oakland Raiders, 71 million dollars in cap. Make sure you guys do something with that. Please get some guys in there. Not the older veterans that are only going to stick around for one to two years. Make sure you guys get some young develop. Like, I like this draft class. You guys got some young players, but I just wish you got, you guys picked out one star player. You know, your best your best pick was, like, Maurice Hurst, and he still has a lot of developing to do. So, with that being said, make sure you guys get some young talent in there and start to shoo away these veteran players and let another team take these veterans. Don't, don't be the team to be a freaking uh, nursing home for the NFL. That's what, that's what the Oakland Raiders 
Raiders are. They're a nursing home in the NFL. Um, it is basically what they're what it is. So uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Make sure you guys have, leave a like and comment your thoughts about the Oakland Raiders. Make sure you guys subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next video.